What is this uh, new project? Uh, this is a uh, Japanese Navy's uh, JMS Diff's uh, new frigate project. Uh, started uh, two years ago. This is our prototype uh, model proposed to our Navy. Is the design finalized and are you starting to build it already? Yes, uh, last, last October we got the contract for production of two frigates. So we are now in detailed design stage and going to a production design stage. And we will start uh, steel cutting uh, this September. Yes. And delivery of the ship to JMSDF is expected from for, where, for uh, when? Yes. Uh, delivery is expected March 20, uh, 2022. Yeah. About uh, three and a half years later. What are the main features of the design? Okay. Our main key feature is uh, you can see uh, this hull structure itself. This is a very low uh, radar cross section uh, design and also uh, uh, need uh, some speed, more than 30 knots. So we uh, propose a Kodak system, combined diesel and gas turbine propulsion, uh, one uh, gas turbine and two diesel uh, type. And also uh, our Navy requested us a very size of crew, around 90 uh, crew size. So we uh, propose a three 60 degree circular CIC, so they can do anything in CIC other than uh, combat management. They can do uh, uh, machinery and electric plant uh, control, damage control, XCOM controls, uh, such on. Uh, to come back to the CIC, what are the main benefits of uh, 360 degrees CIC? Yes. As I said, uh, they can do anything in CIC. So usually they have uh, two or four displays for combat system management. But they should do uh, damage control, uh, machinery control, extra control. So we put a, a 360 degree uh, all around view video walls so that uh, they can display anything they want to see. So using uh, cruising, they can use uh, that, uh, you can, they can see uh, outside you know information and if a uh, damage happens they can switch to the damage control displays when uh, under, com uh, under combat operations they can switch to uh, usual you know combat system uh, displays thanks for the opportunity to talk about virginia our current model of attack submarine. We're building the Block 4 submarine, and we are preparing this year to build the Block 5 submarine. And that's gonna be a major significant new capability in this submarine. What we're looking at here is what we call the Virginia payload module, which adds four large diameter payload tubes that can carry Tomahawk cruise missiles. It can carry other payloads of various types. And that, that payload module will be integrated into the hull of the Virginia class, extending it by about 90 more feet, maybe 27 or so more meters, to make a very, very capable submarine with three times the, the Tomahawk missile capacity of the previous uh, versions of the Virginia class. So we're preparing to build that now in uh, Quonset Point, Rhode Island, and Groton, Connecticut, along with our partner uh, in Newport News. Uh, again, an extremely capable platform. In addition to the Virginia payload module, ha has some other advanced capabilities in terms of stealth and uh, other undersea warfare uh, features. How much more complex is, uh, would it, do you expect it to be for you guys to build uh, Block 5s? Would it take more time at the electric boat to build them? It is going to take a bit, and that's built into the construction span. It is a very complex ship, as you know, submarines, nuclear submarines are the most complex machines in the world, perhaps in history. Uh, but that's been integrated into the construction plan. It's already, the design is very mature. So when we start construction, we know what we're building. Those work instructions are to the workers right there on the shop floor. Uh, it will obviously take uh, a bit longer time to build that additional 2,500 tons of warship into the submarine. On the Columbia class, uh, we are on track to begin full construction of the ship next year. 
uh, critical program. It's the U.S. Department of Defense and U.S. Navy's top acquisition priority, number one acquisition priority. This is the most survivable leg of the U.S. nuclear triad. That is the nuclear submarine component of that triad. And we have been doing the design for a number of years. That design is maturing uh, very well. And we have been doing some advanced construction. We have portions of the hull have been constructed. Uh, missile tubes have been constructed in a, in a new revolutionary fabrication process, which builds the missile tubes and portions of the hull as a composite structure. And uh, we're building that as a common missile compartment, both for the United States uh, Columbia program and the UK Dreadnought program. But we are on pace, on track to start full construction next year. Uh, and the first submarine must be delivered uh, and ready for patrol by 2031 to replace the existing Trident class submarines as they begin to retire. Number one mission, number one acquisition priority on track. So this is a Mad Fires round. It's a new round that we're working on with DARPA it's for ship defense, self-defense. We've been working on it since about 2015. The initial contracts were trade studies and feasibility studies. In February of 2016, we got the initial contract to start development of the round. So it's unique because it's capable of defeating simultaneous oncoming cruise missile threats. So it gives a complement to the ship's self-defense, the layered defense, um, a capability that they don't have today for multiple oncoming threats. It's fired out of the 57 millimeter gun. The control in the air is based on um, a multitude of different things. I can't get into too many of the details about how the technology works and all of those types of things, but it's very common with the family of missiles that we have at Raytheon. So there's a handful of ships today that currently have the 57 millimeter, and then the Navy has some tentative plans about where they may put additional 57 millimeters, but that's a good question for the Navy. The N5 is a variant of the already produced and in, in operations Excalibur 1B. The Excalibur 1B is used by the Army and the Marine Corps in their 155 millimeter uh, howitzer and cannons. What we have done at the behest of the U.S. Navy is made a variant of that and call it the N5 to fit the 5 inch gun on Navy surface uh, warfare vessels. It's important to understand that, that in doing this, what we have done is essentially repackaged this proven round, the Excalibur 1B, just into a new form factor to be able to be fired uh, from Navy surface vessels. The Excalibur N5 round will effectively double the range of what the current 5-inch round can do for the U.S. Navy at this time, but with that comes tremendous accuracy, so it would extend their range from 20 kilometers to 40 kilometers, but still have that less than two meter accuracy and the reliability of the different fuse modes, which give height of burst, impact burst, and also a penetrating uh, capability where it would actually go through a deck before it would explode. The round just completed uh, testing late last year under a Navy program out at Yuma, Arizona. And during that testing, we proved out the accuracy of the system, the suitability of it with the five inch naval gun, and also evaluated was the handling of the rounds, the auto loaders and, and so forth. The idea there being that it would be almost transparent to the, uh, to the sailors on board the ship in terms of the storage, handling, loading, and so forth. So we met all objectives that were laid out by the Navy. The other thing that it does is it, we believe that it would provide the Navy a much greater capability than their current five inch round provides. So as I said, 40 kilometer range versus 20 kilometer range would allow that ship's captain to reach out to a much further range to engage targets with much greater accuracy. The other thing is, is it gives a great benefit 
in, in the doctrine of naval gunfire support to marine operations ashore. So that allows a ship to stand off further or penetrate deeper into land. And also, obviously, the accuracy of uh, hitting the targets, including future improvements that are in development right now for hitting moving targets. So that would apply to both ships as well as large armored vehicles, for instance, on the land. Welcome to the Team Defense Australia Pavilion here at Sea Air Space 2019. I'm Doran Michaels with Defentex, an Australian company here at the Australian booth. Defentex is a multinational company headquartered in Melbourne, Australia. This is our latest product. This is called the Drone 40. It's a 40 millimeter munition uh, compatible with all side loading grenade launcher modules, including the HK320. Uh, it's meant to be fired. Uh, by a grenadier soldier, a conventional or special operations soldier. Once the munition exits the barrel at its apogee of trajectory, it deploys and becomes a quadcopter drone. It has a 20 minute flight time and a 15 kilometer range. Uh, we have a dozen different payloads and warheads uh, that are configured for this platform. Uh, those include ISR with a, a complex sensor suite for battlefield monitoring. We also have a number of different energetic warheads, uh, including anti-armor, HESH, and uh, fragmentation. Uh, it can be used for non-lethal applications as well. The Drone 40 is the most mature product in our that family of products, but uh, once you understand the concept and the, the battlefield con-ops, uh, you can imagine we, uh, we've got working prototypes of a scaled down version, 18 millimeter, which is the dimension of the 12 gauge shotgun and then we scale up to the 81 millimeter mortar for a 30 to 35 kilometer range with extended flight time. And our uh, latest adaptation of the Drone 40 conceptual munition is an undersea variant uh, which we call Shard and this is a swarmable uh, loitering persistent undersea platform uh, that's capable of biomimetic movement. It's based on a cephalopod design. We use soft robotics, uh, 3D printed energetics, and artificial muscles to create a very lifelike uh, swimming cephalopod model that can be equipped with a number of different undersea sensors and weapons.